What do you think of Solaris? Oh, that's great. It's a masterpiece. Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> the interesting thing about this film is uh, I saw it once and I loved it, but I didn't understand it. Right. And rewatching it now made me realize how little I understood it. But when you're looking at something that's a masterpiece, like you said, or that's art, yeah. you know it's great, even if you can't fully identify why it's great. You just know it, that you're yeah. watching something extraordinary. It's an extraordinary film. It's it's a yeah. 10 out of 10, 5 out of 5, whatever you want to, whatever rating scale, two thumbs up you want to go by. It's a great, great film. Yes, it With is. that said, it's also a tough watch. Yes. It's long. <laughs> it is long. It's long and it's <laughs> dense. It it reminded me of when I read The Prince by Machiavelli. So that's actually a very short book. Uh, but why it reminded me of that is that it was so dense. I'm like, why is this book that's so small and so short taking me so long to read? Because I would get a headache every couple pa every couple paragraphs because what I was reading was so dense. The information they were trying to pass on to me was just so thick. And I feel that way in certain parts of this film, in the philosophy that uh, Tarkovsky is saying through his characters, they really make you think. And it really makes you contemplate, okay, how do I recontextualize what I just watched? What does this mean with the characters? What does this mean with the movie? Like, how do I take these things? And one of the critiques of this film, and one of my critiques when I first saw it is, that beginning is so long, cut out the first 45 minutes, let's just get to the space station. <laughs> but on this watching of it, I, I fully realized if you take out that first 45 minutes, if you take even a minute out of this movie, it hurts the rest of the movie because you need all of that buildup for those moments that you see later on to have meaning. How do you know he misses Earth? Like, how do you know Solaris looks cold unless you see the beauty and the greenery of Earth before you go to this cold, desolate, disheveled space station? Like, you need that contrast. You need that time spent with him being human and being yeah. flawed before you get into this deep philosophy that happens early on in the film. So as slow paced and as long as the movie is and any critiques that I had coming into this or that the critiques that are online or that people may have when they see the runtime or they hear about this film, I think they are misguided critiques and I think this movie needs everything you see on screen to make it as special as it is. You cut out the first 45 minutes, this movie isn't as good. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you kind of need that. It's, in a way, it's setting up everything that you need to know in the first 45 minutes. But you don't know it at the time. You don't know it's setting all these things up that are going to be important later. So it's, yeah, it's definitely necessary interestingly i i think that the book only starts with him arriving on the space station uh so that was more tarkovsky's uh, addition to the story the original novel i think just starts with him getting to the space station so it's an interesting i think it difference. was a, a polish author stanislaw lem stanislaw mm -hmm. lem uh he did not like the interpretation of the book <laughs> and this happens sometimes there's an interpretation and the author loves it supports it and sometimes he hates it um we talked about a film on this show the shining where you had a great author in stephen king and your great filmmaker in stanley kubrick and they just completely clashed on in the interpretation and this uh lem seems to be a really good author i mean from all indications the book is great and tarkovsky obviously is a great filmmaker and you have a similar clash where you have two incredibly talented people in two different forms of media and they clash on the interpretation of a great story that's told brilliantly in two different ways 
Yeah, and it sounds like they were kind of almost working together, or at least you know keeping in contact as as the screenplay was being written and uh, Lem was being consulted about it. But then when he saw the finished, I think the first draft of the screenplay, three quarters of it took place on Earth, which he was <laughs> extremely unhappy about. So obviously they didn't quite keep that, but, uh, but yeah, it's interesting that he had kind of been involved in it, he'd been consulted, but, but uh, Tarkovsky definitely had ideas that he wanted to explore and uh, that involved showing life on Earth. Yeah, I believe Lem called it, uh, he said, this isn't my book, this is crime and punishment. <laughs> so I, I think he yeah. wasn't as, he didn't, I think he maybe he didn't want the focus to be too much on the characters and the guilt of this, you know, the suicide and, you know, I think he wanted more to be um, focused on Solaris, the ocean, the you know, the planet and like you said the space station uh, yeah the the I ocean don't... isn't really that big a part of the story i mean it is there but it's definitely more in the backdrop it's not like you know what uh you would think of maybe the the ocean is maybe the antagonist you know it's you know it's like a nature horror like a you know some kind of you know we have to fight this entity it's not really a character that much in, in, in the film at all no, it's kind of the great unknown, and, and I think it's kind of, in, in a way, we don't know. Is it the antagonist, or is it just being what it is? Is it just trying to communicate? And I think that's something that Lem was interested in, was the idea of human beings trying to communicate with alien life forms. Like, how is that even possible? Because the alien life form may not even resemble what we think of as a person. You know, it, it, it might be an ocean. It's a body of water. Like, how do you communicate with that? It's like a very different thing. So I think he was obsessed with that kind of idea, the, the failure of communication between human beings and other alien races. So it's definitely here, but I think uh, Tarkovsky brought a, a bunch of other things to it as well. Yeah, I think that's why he made it an ocean as well, because he didn't want it to have any human characteristics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it, I think this story would have been interesting if you focused on it because it's an interesting concept, which I guess why it's a great book. But I also think that the movie is great itself. So I don't yes. see any fault in either direction. No, no, I don't either. Yeah. Uh, another thing interesting about this is this happened during the um, space race, which I believe was the mid 50s to the mid 70s. And uh, Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey, I think, came out before Man Landed on the Moon. Definitely shot before. And this came out a few years later, and it was... You hear different versions of this. I haven't found a definitive version online, as this is the Soviet Union's response. And it is a, as, like, the U.S. versus the Soviet Union slash space race slash movie race with science fiction. <laughs> or you also hear versions where this is Tarkovsky's response to Kubrick's different version of similar type things going on. Um, so it, whose response, who's responding to who, who has beef with who, who knows? <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> uh, but it does seem like there is, uh, if not um, a full on competition with these movies, there is a, definitely a full on comparison with these movies and they are extremely different in execution. You have Kubrick uh, again with uh, you know, uh, 2001, my favorite film ever. Part of the reason why we are doing this type of format and, and doing movies like this is because uh, I think I'd mentioned to you, uh, maybe off pod, that I love 2001 so much, but I almost never watch it. And like, I really want to focus on watching great films. Um, so it's been a while since I've seen 2001. And my enjoyment of one film doesn't hurt my enjoyment of the other. I don't see competition. I think they're both great films. Uh, I, but I love 2001. It's my favorite film. And that transition of the cavemen, I think it was, throwing the the animal uh, bone that they found out was, a, you know, 
through evolution found out they could use it as a weapon, throwing it up into the air and it transitions into that space station symbolizes everything that 2001 is about. It's about technology, evolution, the tools of man. It's not about people. I, as much as I love that film, I couldn't tell you anything about those characters. <laughs> Hal 9000 is the most developed character in there and it's a voice from a machine so uh this is the antithesis of 2001 uh by execution uh, but again they're both great films but i can see how someone with the values of tarkovsky would say this is just cold and yeah you know, yeah, he wasn't a fan. Unlike of anything, I yeah, he was not a fan. He was not a <laughs> <No>. <laughs> fan. But ironically, Kubrick was a fan of this film, though. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, that's good. Um, yeah, I think Tarkovsky wanted to bring more emotional depth to his films and not really focus on the technology and stuff like that. You know, how does this thing work, or you know, how does the machine work? He wasn't so interested in that. He wanted the the more human drama, I guess, the human emotion. And I think that uh, he definitely succeeded in this movie. Yeah, absolutely. He wrote a book called Sculpting in Time, which I skimmed a little bit before we did this. And it seems like his philosophy on, on filmmaking and how he views films is not so much with a plot structure as it is a uh, time structure. And it's about picking out certain points in time and condensing them and playing with them. And then you have a cohesive story from there. It wasn't about the, the you know narrative structure that we're all used to. And you can tell that with this movie, there is no real like, okay, we got to get this and do that or time's going to run out. And, you know, I got to get to the station before this alien does this or that. You know the main character goes up on the station and it suddenly becomes this relationship drama almost you know <laughs> crime and punishment yeah. uh in space but there's no real plot or, or structure as far as that goes but um after skimming the book i'm glad i did that before i watched it because it's clearly it made me appreciate the film more because you see that it's just him showing you moments in time. And when you see these moments, when he has the big moments towards, as the film develops, they have more meaning because you know why this means so much to this character. You know why every, when a character reacts highly emotionally, you can more connect with them because you've been through their journey. You know why that means something to them. It's not about showing you anything that spectacular on screen because we don't see anything major happen. There's nothing major that's going on, but we emotionally connect with the character because we follow their life journey as opposed to just following a plot storyline. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, I have to say too that uh, when I first started watching the movie, I, I thought, well, it, it's beautifully shot. It looks beautiful, and that's the first thing that I kind of noticed. And it's not often that I actually stop to notice that, but it really is beautifully shot. It looks beautiful, and and I found it interesting. Like it was an interesting situation, and I'm talking about the first 45 minutes here on Earth, you know, where it was interesting. Um, and I thought to myself, well, is it ever going to be more than that? I don't know. It is at least interesting and it's beautiful to look at, but as we got deeper in and as he gets to the spaceship and as we do wind up in that sort of, uh, uh, whatever you want to call it, the relationship drama, um, it just got more and more interesting to me. It got more gripping. Uh, it was kind of creepy and disturbing at times. It was uh, suspenseful. I just found I was more and more wrapped up in it and, it and it really worked for me. I liked it more and more as it went along. Absolutely. And the, the little moments, again, they don't, they feel little if you don't have the buildup to them and mm -hmm. the proper journey to follow. And um, 
I definitely appreciate this film a lot more having researched it before I watched it. Um, and I think it's it would be a difficult watch if you don't know the filmmaker and what he's trying to accomplish. It's almost like going to an art museum. You can't just look at the painting or the sculpture. You have to read that little tidbit next to it to get some context. Without context, it's hard to appreciate this. You know, you if you just get bored or doze off during some of the slow parts, waiting for something exciting to happen and it doesn't happen, you're gonna say, what the hell am I watching, you know? <laughs> um, so yeah, I think context helps. And I think if you understand his philosophy on filmmaking and the fact that you're just, you're just capturing certain moments in time and these moments are what makes what makes these people who they are, what develops them, what makes them the character you're seeing on screen. When we see him, he's a tortured character. But yes. through the snippets, we kind of see why he's tortured and, and mm -hmm. why he is the way he is. And I, um, yeah, I greatly appreciate this film. And I love the fact that we decided to go with it. It's it's it, it's it's a great all time classic. Um, it was also uh, has another version as well, the yes. uh, Steven Soderbergh version. I think uh, two thousand two. I think so. so. Even, even that's an old version at this point. It's <laughs> hard to say. True. Yes. Uh, um, but I've seen that version. I haven't seen it in a very long time. And I saw it once, and I didn't like it. But honestly, the more I thought about it, not even just recently, but maybe a year or two after I watched it, it kind of popped into my head again. I was like, you know what? This isn't a terrible movie. I only think it's bad because I'm comparing it to this version of Solaris. Um, but from all indications, it's a lot closer to the book. Um, and it does chew out the fat of the first 45 minutes of this version. So it's a much tighter version. I think it's around 90 minutes. But it shows you that you really need those 45 minutes if you watch <laughs> that Clooney and Soderbergh version, because uh, it does fall short in depth. It's a very cookie cutter, you know, um, plot oriented, story oriented, as opposed to character, you know, time structured film that Tarkovsky made. Have you seen it? Uh, no, I haven't, but uh, I, I read a bit about it, and that was my impression that it was an attempt to be closer to the book. So it, it would lose all that stuff, like the beginning, the 45 minutes, because, uh, yeah, I don't think that's in the book. And, yeah, I guess I should see it at some point, because it would probably be interesting, at least, to compare it. But, um, but yeah, it's hard to imagine that it would be anywhere near as good as this version. Mm hmm yeah, it's kind of like a lot of the American versions of longer, more artistic auteur foreign films. Old Boy was remade by Spike mm -hmm. Lee. Um, you know, you have a lot of the heart, Japanese horror films that were remade. So, it, it, I mean, there's a long history of, you know, an Americanized version that chews out the fat. Seven Samurai was turned into a Western, The Magnificent Seven. So. Um, it's just yes. a matter of like, uh, all right, what are the critiques people are making about these movies? Let's make those changes, put in a few big stars and, you know, put in a plot structure that most people are used to and see if we can make a buck. It didn't end up making yes. any money, but um, no. <laughs> it, it, it wasn't a terrible film. And if you like it, you shouldn't feel ashamed to like it. It was a decent film. It just wasn't this epic classic that this version of Solaris is. But uh, yeah, definitely highly recommended. Great film. Um, you can interpret this in a lot of different ways. And I think that's part of what Tarkovsky aims for with his films um, in that because he's doing a time structure and there's not a plot, there is no right answer. This isn't a quiz where there's a right answer. I think this was a quote from him that if 700 people read one book there are 700 different versions of that book then because you all interpret it in a different way and i think that's what he aims for with this film because if you look at this film and i saw i saw some video essays on it as well because i was like let me just try to see what some you know what's the consensus of this film 
and I saw some great essays, but a lot of them go in a lot of different directions. And it's because of the way he structures his film. You can look at this as a Pinocchio story of this woman who isn't real, that wants to be real, wants to be looked at as human. And this film questions humanity. You can look at it from that standpoint. You can look at it from like a Little Mermaid standpoint where she's coming out of the ocean for her love to acknowledge her and, you know, and finding love. And um, there are a lot of different ways you can interpret this film, a lot of different directions you can take it in. Was he always on Solaris? Is he one of the manifestations from Solaris? Was he, you know, is he on Solaris at the end? How long was he on Solaris towards the end? It, there's a lot of different directions you can take this stuff in. And there is no definitive right way because, again, of the way he structures it in that there is no right or wrong answer. Uh, another great Russian Soviet uh, filmmaker, um, Sergei, Sergei Einstein? Eisenstein? Eisenstein. 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 Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's another filmmaker I definitely want to get into. I've seen some of his films, Battleship Potemkin and Ivan the Terrible Part 1, I think I saw. Part 2, maybe, I'm not sure. But I saw a couple of his films. But he is the father, grandfather, the inventor or pioneer of montages and montage filmmaking. And it's funny that you have these two filmmakers from the same region that have such different philosophies. Because when you talk about montages, you're telling people what to think through a series of images. And that's the almost the exact opposite approach that he takes. Um, and I find that contrast to be interesting and it, it'll be interesting to maybe do one of his films and then contrast it with uh one of tarkovsky's film but they almost have the almost exact opposite approach through a series of images and cuts and editing i'm going to tell the story as opposed to long takes that travels through time instead of plot and structure yeah um one of the things that uh you know i i was not really uh I didn't do a lot of preparation before watching the movie for the first time. And uh, I was struck by, uh, I, I felt I could see a lot of uh, influence that this movie had had on other movies. And I could also see maybe influences that this movie had taken from other movies uh, or, or, you know, maybe the book had taken from other movies or other books. But, but you know, I actually thought of 2001 as, as a movie that had some similarities in that, you know, you've got a big computer that's kind of controlling things and, and kind of messing with the humans. And here we've got the, the ocean that's kind of controlling people and messing with them. Like there's a certain similarity there. Um, but, you know, I thought of movies like uh, uh, Event Horizon. I don't know if you saw Event Horizon. And, uh, you know, it feels like that one was definitely influenced by this. And even movies like Blade Runner. Uh, because you get into that kind of idea of, you know, what is a human being, you know, and, and if we create a human being in some way, you know, like in Blade Runner, they create these replicants, they artificially create them, and then they kind of feel like they're human, and they don't know that they're not human, and they want to they wanna live, you know, and I feel there's something similar going on in this movie, where it's maybe the ocean is creating people, you know, pulling them out of people's minds, and sort of fabricating these really close facsimiles of people and and you know they don't even know you know necessarily or they they think they remember things and and you know at what point you know do we say well you know this this person is human you know even though they were created by some other means you know where do you draw that line you know is this person human is this person not human i find it all very interesting uh i don't know what did you think about that well, that's what I said with the whole Pinocchio type thing. It was like True. there's different yeah. ways you can it, you can interpret it. Um, yeah, it's it's interesting in that uh, after she was created for a certain amount of time, she did gain her own agency. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's again, you can like I said, you can look at Little Mermaid, you can look at it as Pinocchio, you can look at it as a child, where yeah. when a child is born, you're everything to them you move away from them they start crying they throw tantrums they need that dependence and eventually yeah. they 
grow and learn to develop on their own. And that's kind of what happened with her in that she eventually got her own agency and she became, mm -hmm. she wasn't his wife anymore. She was a completely other person. Uh, she yeah. didn't need to be around him when he, when they had that philosophical meeting where all the characters are in the, in that room, uh, initially when he first left her, she broke through the door because yes. she couldn't stand being alone for away from him. Yes. Then he realized, oh my God, I left her alone. And he ran back there sweating and running and, <laughs> and she's just in her own thoughts, her own mm -hmm. thoughts, nothing to do with him, even though she was born from his thoughts. So, yes. uh, yeah, I definitely think this movie explored those elements as well.